my name's Halim Rasul. A lot of people know me as Strings. I'm a dancer from Detroit, Michigan, and I'm kicking it off with the B Shine. I was inspired, you know, uh, in a dance direction from my late cousin Hakeem. He used to dance on the scene, which is a real popular dance show here in Detroit, Michigan. A lot of people know what that was. It was a local show, man. He was like a um, a ghetto celebrity if he was on that show, and he was he was a b-boy. He he did pop and did locking. Back in that time, they did everything. Um, but he was he was really talented, um, and that was like my first you know induction or you know um, experience with uh, with hip hop culture. Um, finding out later, and then my brother, older brother Specs, he was an MC. A lot of people know him, and he was part of a crew called Third Kind. Uh, he was older than me, so when he started to you know venture out and go to the clubs like St. Andrews, you know, I, you know, you know, I was right behind him, and you know, that got me kind of into the hip hop scene. There's a couple of moments of strong impact uh, with hip hop. You know, seeing my cousin perform and dance during our, um, our family reunions, uh, which was a lot of times. Um, also, first time that I went to St. Andrews, uh, which was the popular club out here. You've seen it on 8 Mile, but that's, that was the nucleus along with the hip hop shop. And, you know, going to the hip hop shop for the first time, buying a t-shirt from Maurice Malone himself. Um, but when I first went to St. Andrews Hall, um, you know, I saw, which would be later in my crew, a crewmate U-turn, I seen him doing uh, head spins. And it was from that moment, that was like 94. That's when I started to pick back up, you know, breaking seriously. So that was definitely an influential time. It wasn't a lot of B-boys, uh, you know, in Detroit at the time, you know. It was a sprinkle of b-boys when I went to St. Andrews, but they was mainly doing multiple styles. Like, you've seen people doing house dance. You've seen people doing locking and popping. Um, U-Turn stuck out to me because he was more into, like, the groundwork and um, power moves. And, and at that moment, I kind of started off as a popper, you know what I'm saying? And uh, But I, I, like, quickly gravitated to more of, like, the... Uh, the more dynamics to the dance. Yeah. Well, again, Hakeem, he was, he inspired us because when we used to go um, to family functions, you know, that's where we was exposed to the music. You know, we would see albums around. Um, and my brother quickly migrated to rap and I always knew that he was into writing and rap. Uh, he wanted to be a journalist at one time. So he was always into that. Um, and um, I would say maybe, I think at the time, uh, one of his favorite MCs was uh, Rakim, you know. And I remember, like, walking from elementary school, rhyming some, uh, you know, uh, Rakim's music from Paid in Full, you know what I'm saying. So, But I tried rapping myself at a point, but I knew that wasn't really something that, kept me engaged it's like we we both had this gift and he could dance too but it wasn't something that you know really stuck with him so um you know that's why you know i, I you know eventually you know just migrated to dance and you know he stuck with it the MCM. once um i got my skills to a certain level um once i went to saint andrews the other dancers started to recognize me so you know um, I would go to the clubs and, you know, so our relationship got thicker, uh, specifically with U-Turn. He used to travel all the time. He was older. Um, you know, he, he, you know, I haven't been outside of Detroit yet. And, uh, he invited me to a Rocksteady anniversary. I believe it was in 97, um, or 98, one of those. And, uh, I went, you know, I saved up my money. Um, I, all I had to do was save out a certain amount. I went with him and it was one other person and that was like a groundbreaking experience to be in the midst of pioneering groups like Rocksteady, Universe, uh, Rocksteady crew. And um, it wasn't just them, but it was other people that was tangible, you know, um, 
pioneers around, you know, MCs and stuff like that. Three day event. Um, people was at this time was coming from over, from all over Europe, you know, Asia, coming to to New York, the nucleus, and uh, that experience, man, was just like a life changing for me. My brother supported me. Uh, my mom's at the at the, at the very beginning, you know, just like any other moms, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like she supported in a way that you know, w- where she she wasn't like dead against it, tell me I can't do it. So it was just one of those things where she, it was just like pushing off or whatever, push, you know, like. But I felt like that was a support because she didn't just totally write it off or was you know said I couldn't do it so I I do give it up to her for that (laughs) in 2006 I was chosen uh, for the Red Bull Beat Writers and they choose 30 dancers out of like seven countries and I was I was one of them and it was a rigorous progress process application process where you got to show video samples you got to answer like three pages of questions you know questions like you know uh what's your three uh favorite songs and why you know dancers and why you know um they really wanted to you know see how you think how much you knew um about you know uh, hip-hop culture and, and dance culture but that was a life-changing aspect because when I went there, it was basically like b-boying meets the real world or reality TV because they it was all expense-paid trip to New York. This particular year was in New York, and um, basically every day it was a surprise. You know, um, we were uh, we were like arms length with like hip-hop pioneers like um, Mr. Wiggles, Boogaloo Sam. Uh, Footwork Brian Green, um, Crazy Legs Ken Swift, and the list goes on. So at that particular time, we had a week with these guys, 30 of us. And um, by the end of that, I, you know, I knew how to conduct my own workshops. I knew, you know, it inspired me to go back home and create my own events. Um, it, it really gave me a, a good uh, kickstart to like approaching hip hop with a business mind frame, and I was able to do that after that, you know. And I'm, I still have connections with some of those pioneers, like Brian Green, which he brought me to New York plenty of times afterwards, and I still do things with him. Um, so that was a pivotal time in my career. Also, one other one I'll give you is winning a grant. I won a Kresge grant for $25,000 just for being a B-boy. Because at that time, you know, it's an application process. Um, and, you know, they're looking for performing artists in Detroit. And uh, I applied and, and I won. You know, you would think they would pick. They only picked two dancers at that time. And it was a flamenco dancer and a B-boy. So I... Uh, and it, it was it was like they give you the money, you could do whatever you want with it. That was tight. You see what I'm saying? So uh, that was another um, great experience in, in in my life. So and I would say one other one was I just came back from Africa uh, through dance and um, never thought I'd be going to Africa. I went to Zimbabwe for a dance exchange. So that was great. You know, I was an artist, a 2D artist growing up, you know, in the fine arts. And um, I just remember those days, you know, it was very slow paced for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I would be in a room for hours coming up with a piece, you know. But as dancing started to, uh, you know, take over, I noticed that like, you know, um, that for me, I, you know, I needed a, a, a quicker ful- fulfillment. You know, I started, uh, you know, it, you know, like in, in 2D design, you know, it, it takes me like, uh, you know, just to get into a zone, it takes me 30 minutes to an hour. You know what I'm saying? But basically to say that as soon as you hit the floor, as soon as you hit the, the uh, hear the music, you know, it's like that feeling you get, and it's so it's right away. You know what I'm saying? I know it's 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 probably another way to say it, but that's um, I would say about dancing. I, I like 
the most. It's, uh, you can feel the sensation, the love, you can, uh, right away. You know, it's instant. We'll travel the world. You know, I've been to Paris, Sweden, Africa, China, all over America, you know, uh, places in Canada. Um, and, you know, I come from humble beginnings. You know, my parents haven't been overseas, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, all praise is due to the Most High. You know, he blessed me with this opportunity, but I, I seen, you know, just by me uh, following a gift that he gave me, I, I see, I see the, uh, the benefits from it. So, uh, traveling, I would, uh, would say that that's number one for me, and um, which that opens up your eyes when you, see, when you see more, you know. And then being able to bring back to, to, to your home and, uh, and see how your home benefits from that, you know. Like I came back and um, did a documentary on Detroit's dance style because I was so inspired by how things were being done outside of Detroit. So uh, when I came back here, I did a documentary on Detroit style called The JIT, which has been around since the 70s and nobody has done it. Uh, I feel like, <laughs> why did I have to do this? You know what I'm saying? But I, I noticed I was in a, a pivotal position because I was able to venture off and see Detroit from a different perspective, you know? So, so that's like one contribution I would say that, you know, I was able to really follow through and thoroughly uh, to to complete, you know, for the city of Detroit. Yeah, many, many years from now, you know, I would just hope that, um, I, you know, for me, you know, I, I put the most high on, on top of everything. So I want people to, to see me first as God-fearing, a Muslim, you know what I'm saying? And then maybe uh, everything else, like dance, hip-hop contributions, because I got a lot of them, and, and I wouldn't have got none if it was if it wasn't for you know the most high so uh that first and then maybe you know dance i will hope to inspire people to uh you know follow their gifts that they was received and you know trust in themselves uh confidence to follow through discipline you know what i'm saying because all of this is a sacrifice. I tell people when I talk to them, you know, you have to sacrifice something if, you, if you're really trying to attain something. You know, I had to sacrifice uh, a lot, you know. So, um, you know, and opening up some doors for other people to make it, I guess, easier. Um, or, you know, they see uh, an approach that I, I've, I've taken, you know, like maybe doing a documentary. So you got people doing documentaries now. Uh, so, you know, whatever. If it's positive, you know, that's what's, what's up for me. Yeah, I wish my brother was here, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, he was he was part of a, a group called Third Kind that, that inspired some of, some of the greats that everybody knows from, from Detroit. And, uh, you know, it's, I know it's, it's a short segment. We can't get into all the details, but, you know, we was really there. Um, when everything was was popping off, and we we had an opportunity to see how things uh, really went down, you know, Detroit is it's indeed a special place. So.